This is just whale noises. Ooh. It's whale noises, or it could be Tommy doing. Oh, no. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do like my like seal claps, and I'm just <laughs> knocking everything. <laughs> And welcome to GT Not Live, where today it is more FNAF time, because that constitutes 1 20th of this channel's programming. Actually, that's not true. It's probably about 1... what would it be? 1 10th? 1 15th? Uh, maybe like a 7th. A 7th? Yeah. Ooh, a 7th. That's That would be a mighty chunk. I wouldn't be surprised, though, actually. There's, the, if, if people made more fan games of other franchises, it'd be wonderful. Uh, we have a lot of reactions to Mandela Catalog. We have a lot of reactions to... No, it's a lot of FNAF. So, so anyway, uh, today it's not FNAF as normal. Uh, you know, if you've been watching Game Theory, obvi obviously we are smack dab in the middle of our uh, ultimate timeline release uh, with parts one and two going out, parts three... Maybe out by the time this is out. I'm not 100 percent sure. I, I need to give that one a couple, like a like a week or two buffer, just because I don't want Game Theory to have like all oh, FNAF, all oh, FNAF, and then the algorithm's like, this is only a FNAF channel, and then it's like, no, we do so much more. Uh, <laughs> not much, uh, six sevenths more. Whatever. Uh, so we do six sevenths more than that. I also really like the vocalization of no! Game Theory there. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's that is what Game Theory sounds like. Hi, I'm Game. Theory. Hi, yeah, Game Theory! Whoa! <laughs> Hello, Internet! It's me! So, uh, with... That's that's actually... For any of you who ever wonder, like, what the programming, like, rhythms go and, and why we don't, like, finish series right away or why we kind of spread them out or whatever, that's actually the reason why it isn't, like, stretching out views or anything like that. I, like, I would love to be done with the, the Five Nights at Freddy's, like, timeline at this point. The problem is that if you do... Like, you don't want to send such a strong signal to YouTube that you're like, this is the one thing that I do and the only thing that I do that YouTube suddenly pigeonholes you into that one thing. And so that's it, right? Um, and so that's why one of the reasons why, you know, if even if we're doing like an ongoing series, like with the SNAF timeline, which is a multi-parter, you don't want to do like three back to back to back weeks, ideally. Um, you know, you want to mix in something else in between or like, every other week or something to just keep signaling to the algorithm, hey, people watch this channel for other stuff too, but, you know, this is, these are the view-getters, right? Um, so that's the reason why it's not so much a, a timing thing. Anyway, long story short, that's the rationale here. That's also why, you know, we, we do all sorts of wacky stuff in here to keep ourselves flexible and, and whatever. But um, today we're not just doing FNAF, we're doing FNAF VHS, which, which we've done before. So what is different about this FNAF VHS, Ash? What, yes. what, are, what are we talking about here? What's going so on? So this is by a whole new, a whole new human. Um, a another human? Another human is doing this, Matt. Well, I actually that, haven't received confirmation that this is a human. I was um, going to say, but, are, but you, are I, you sure? I made, I made the assumption. Maybe um, this is an maybe this is an animatronic or an AI making a story about oh, AI. Oh no! Oh, buddy! No! No, so how much will they take you, from us? When you say new human, did you mean because uh, Baddington took over the FNAF VHS? Yes, teams, didn't he? So there was, you know, Baddington, huge figure in the FNAF VHS world. This right. was actually by another creator whose channel is called Spectre. Spectre, which I think is a very cool name. It's also like Baddington. I was gonna say it's all <laughs> like that. Bad... <laughs> it's also a uh, James Bond movie, Spectre. Ah, yes. You have no clue what I'm talking about. Have you never seen a James Bond movie? I, I haven't. You know what? I only just recently started to go through them. So okay. well, I, I see that. Like, I'd be like, ah, you're usually so pop culture aware. But honestly, even for me, I, I've never been necessarily drawn to them. And so I'm like, oh, I, I should watch them at some point. Now that uh, the whole James Bond has, like the current James Bond has passed. I'm like, I, let me catch up. So I have. But pretty solid. Um, not Still not quite my cup of tea. Um, I don't know. There's there's some weird stuff. Like, James Bond is kind of a jerk to everyone around him, and yet, like, all the women are like, ah! Which I know is kind of the point of it, but it feels weird to me in a lot of ways. You know, here in, in the year of our Lord 2023, having, like, the jerky male being like, hey, I, I'm gonna ignore you, woman, and the woman like, ah, yeah, James Bond. 
James Bond. You're amazing. I'm just imagining you like watching this movie, like clenching your fists, like they never go for the nice guys. Yeah, right now, curses. <laughs> what about me? I was here the whole time. <laughs> James Bond, I can run off a crane and jump as well. <laughs> That's the, I, can you? I, I can sit on a, a a broken chair and have things swung at my undercarriage just like the rest of them, which is a thing that happens in Casino Royale. And was actually that was actually the best one. If you want to watch one, I think like hot take or at least in the modern Bonds, I'm still working my way through the older Bond movies. Mm. But as far as modern Bond goes. Casino Royale would be my, my pick of the top. That one was pretty solid. The there, there's a, there's um, some good villains in some of the other ones, but they're a little bit slower and not as exciting. That's the one. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. So anyway, uh, FNAF VHS. So it's by a new human named Spectre. Yes. And are they another remake or is, are these just no, new these ones? No, are, these are brand new guys. Okay. So I've actually, cool. you know... I've gone through. Are they? Is it a I've recent series? Them. Um, they started less than a year ago. So recent by our standards. Recent by, <laughs> by you know, by our standards, we are right on time. Nice, awesome, <laughs> right, right in the pocket. Yeah, smooth. Cool. So I guess what react to them, and here we are. Let uh, us all enjoy content together. Yeah, but first, before we get into that, yes, I'm thirsty. Oh. Well, have I have a solution for you that may or may not be sponsored. Hey, this is brought to you by Era. For those of you who don't know, I am constantly looking for ways to, I don't know, lessen my dependence on soda and also just like move away into drinks that aren't full of, full of artificial colorings and flavorings and stuff. And like aspartame, one of those things that I recognize is really bad for you because every other nation in the world has banned aspartame. That's the artificial sweetener in stuff like uh, Diet Coke. And also it's the artificial sweetener in all of the like, uh, like f- water flavoring pods and things like that. Oof. So I'm like, well, so I've replaced Diet Coke in my life with flavored water, but the flavored water is still giving me the stuff that I was looking to avoid in the first place. Yeah. Plus I'm not getting hit with caffeine. It's like the worst of all worlds. And so I, I tried to do water for a long time, but that wasn't great. I did tea, iced tea for a long time, unsweet iced tea, but I drank so much of it that it, that it started to like eat into my stomach, which wasn't great. Anyway, long story short, I've been looking for alternative solutions and Arup is, is the one uh, because it's not, it's flavored water without actual flavoring, right? It's all done through these little scent pods here that you can, that you can just pop off. It's all done through these little scent pods and you just pop it on the top of the bottle and as you drink, it mixes in the scent into your soft palate, basically. And so it tastes like whatever you're putting on the, the flavor pod, but without any calories, without any artificial sugars, without anything. It's it's awesome. You're still just drinking pure water. And I'm, I'm carrying this one around with me, this giant tankard, because my only problem with their other bottles... Uh, you have one, don't you? I do. Um, I was so interested in it that I asked you... Hey, how can I get my hands on one of these? It's true. Um, and then I got my own. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit addicted to it. Right, it's great. Um, because, you know, I when I heard about the concept, I was a little bit skeptical. It's it's weird, right? It's it's one of those like, no way. Does yeah, this like work. that can't that can't work. It's like when your parents used to tell you, Oh, pinch your nose when you take medicine as a kid, it won't you won't taste it. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I don't know. And then I'm like, I had it. I had my first flavor was the wild berry. Yeah. Oh, banger. Blow, blew my mind. Yeah. Like. Blueberry your mind. It blew berry my mind. I <laughs> I would not be saying this if it didn't actually work. No, it's, it's it true. Works. It's, it's wild. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's wild. And uh, like I was saying, the, the only problem I have with their normal bottles is that they're like too small for me at this point because I drink so much water because of this. Because again, it doesn't feel like I'm drinking water. It feels like I'm drinking just like a like a flavored thing. And so I would get through them so quickly, which is a good problem to have when you're drinking water, that I'm like, oh, I wish they had a bigger bottle. So uh, they sent me this tankard now. <laughs> so this is good. This keeps me like, it's good for like an hour at a time, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, if you ever, so right now I'm, I'm drinking, have you tried lime? I love the lime. The lime, the lime slaps, right? Yeah. The lime slaps, but it's as easy as like, oh, I'm sick of the lime. Here's that wild berry that here's that wild berry that Ash was talking about. Look, just pop it on, boop, and you leave, leave a little pop it up. It tastes completely different. It went from citrusy to the to the berry flavor. Oh man, I haven't had wild berry in a while actually. Isn't it so refreshing? I, yeah, I've been doing a lot of watermelon <laughs> and a lot of lime lately, which is really good. Wild berries, so good. It's so coming back to an old friend. And if you and here's the last thing. And then we'll talk about FNAF VHS. But if you <laughs> pop it down, 
right? The scent goes away. The bottle basically like covers up this little scent releases there. And so the scent goes away. So the water just tastes like water again. So if you want to mix it up, it's crazy. That's an important factoid to know. Is it? Yeah. Because I never use it. I just like the flavors a lot. Well, I was so excited about it that at first I pushed it all the way down. Oh, and you're like, Wait, and I was like, oh no, like and I pulled it up, and then that's when I blueberried my own mind. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm. I haven't done enough mango passion fruit. Mango passion fruit is solid too. Oh, they're really good. The only one that this is true story, and I don't know if Arab wants me to say it or whatever, but like true story, the only one that I, I is not my fave is orange vanilla. So orange vanilla swirl. That's the only flavor that I've met that I'm like, yeah, I don't really care for this one. I I liked it. Did when you? I, when I tried it out, yeah. I like like I like the concept of orange vanilla creamsicles. Like I love creamsicles; those are mm -hmm. great. But drinking it in fluid form, yeah, not so much. But anyway, that is Air Up. So if you want to test it out, trust me, it's it's great. Like basically everyone that I've convinced to try it here in the office has been converted, and now there's like five or six Air Up bottles that are all floating around. It's amazing. A, it's a problem. You it, have to get those customizable, like, little straps on it so that you can tell whose is whose. It's true. Because it's becoming a problem. I don't know. Uh, Tim the other day got a, a nice blue one. He did get the blue one. I like one. the blue one. And the green one? The green like, one's ooh. sick. It's, the green's nice. Yeah. I like that. It makes me wonder if there's a psychological thing related to the color of the bottle and what flavor you're perceiving. Ooh. Food theory! Did you know that you can use free Fave 5 to receive a free favorite 5 variety pack with the purchase of any starter set? That is F-R-E-E-F-A-V-5. Let's hop back to the episode, shall we? Uh, speaking of theories, let's come up with some theories about animatronics, shall we? Oh, okay. Pull it up! Okay, so uh, what? Uh, I should probably do these in what? Reverse order, I reverse guess? Reverse order. So okay. we'll start with um, the salvage. The salvage. Oh, Chica. I was the first. I have seen everything by Spectre. I always read it as the savage. <laughs> the savage. <laughs> Chica is a savage salvage. Savage salvage. Yep. That, I said, like, did I say that right? Yes. Uh, it looks like they're releasing every three months. Ten. Well, I guess that's four months. It's three months. Three month gap. So we're due for a new one. It's been three months. Salvage. Let's see. Oh, nice classic analog horror. Okay. So, the boss wanted me to come in a bit later than usual to do some after hour salvaging on the older animatronics. Yep. Uh, since we're opening a new location sometime of uh, June of next year... A sister so location in June of next year? No. Lore! Major lore there. Right. It Add it to the time. Oh, man. I have to rewrite the whole thing again. Throw it all off. Part four, guys. Woo! You know, it is, it is one of those things, though, where, like, watching other people do like a fan made stories about the FNAF universe makes me look at it in different ways. We'll, we'll probably talk about that a little bit later, but cause I want to get started with this, yeah. but it's one of those things where like sometimes I'll watch these sorts of things and it makes me think of the lore and like, Oh wait, that's actually the way that should fit together in the timeline or whatever. So who knows? Maybe I'll have a big revelation here. Right we're going to see if we can reuse as many parts as we can. That'll uh, go on to be used for the newer models. Smart. I'm uh, fairly new to all Recycle, this, reuse. Uh, so Fazbear really Entertainment. Exactly sure what to expect. Eco-friendly. this room here. But uh, Bob told me when he went to go through the hands in the, the mouth. Bob. So it's really nothing more than just a few audio clips. Yeah. Bob told. Recorder. So uh, hoping I'm uh, getting a sim I hope I'll get this a looks great. experience coming into this, but I'm not entirely sure of that. Is this in... Uh, so Boss said to record me doing it as well to, uh, this for all my purposes. This? And also to have some proof that I actually did it. Um, and so... Like in Maya? Like 3D, 3D modeling? Here. This looks great. And it feels really realistic, like like they almost like they built a set. You can tell that there's some sort of like digital creation here. <laughs> you can pass the light switch, dude. <laughs> Usually it's on the wall next to the door. Spoiler alert. Grope, groping, oh no. You should have left the door open, prop the door. Jesus. <laughs> good, good girl, Chica. <laughs> Just waiting. Hey, I'm here. Right. I'm here for my interview. Everything's set up. That's a great model. Oh, I love seeing the angles too. All right. I guess he wasn't wrong. Oh, we're doing some FNAF six sal right. salvaging. Yes. Let's get this shit over with. Cool. I will say. 
that that's one of the things. So I'm, I'm thinking this is done in VR, right? Um, that's one of the reasons the the FNAF VR game is is one of my favorites in the whole franchise is because you get a different perspective on the animatronics. You know, you're able to like see the the full model around them as opposed to like just the the flat angles of them, which makes them feel so much more realistic and appreciate the overall design. It's really really cool. Is that the taser? Is that the controlled shock? <laughs> Don't tase me, bro. All right then. That looks good. Let's see. Looks like the tape's already in there. Such a weird control. concept. Oh yeah, there it is. There's that yeah. VR hand. <laughs> I gotta say, Chica, one of the scariest, like withered Chica here, one of the scariest designs in, this, in the franchise. Over just yet. I don't really know. There's so it's a little bit underplayed by the uh, undercut by the fact that the default for withered Chica is T posing. T posing withered Chica, not not as scary. You know, I feel like most entities in a T pose, not super frightening. But standing there, yeah, legitimately creepy. I mean, it's a little outdated, but it does assert dominance. <laughs> it is. I mean, it is asserting dominance. Maybe, maybe a little too much stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know. Like, just confident stance, Chica. Power stance. Heroic stance, Chica. T-pose. T-pose is a bit much. Like, uh, you're trying a bit too hard there, Chica. Your end-of-day routine. Okay. You must complete the maintenance checklist. Okay. During this testing phase... Check on the animatronics I was so bad at this. I think when we played this in FNAF 6, it was before they patched it to make it better. I, there was something about it that I, it just didn't click when we first played this in FNAF 6. Interesting. What do people care about? This is so strange. Just as a concept. Uh, looks like the left arm moved. It does look like that, yes. Very, very perceptive of you! Okay. <laughs> Check. That'd be... And this also makes it so much easier. Like, and, and, that, and that's one of the things that, again, like, VR kind of throws it in the, into perspective. But also, when we did Game Lab, uh, we did an episode of our, our, our YouTube Red series, Game Lab, where we tested out real-life science of video games. And one of the ones that we obviously had to do was FNAF. But, you know, what is the realism of haunted animatronic pizzeria restaurant? Well, you know, you'd sit in the desk and you'd see, like, what it would be like to be in that sort of situation and what's different. And one of the things that I never really realized until going through it, and I think the VR experience starts to get you there, is you have peripheral vision right you have proprioception as well to like recognize when things are moving in a space around you and so the idea of like i'm going to watch this thing and then listen to the sounds and if it moves i'm going to mark it off let me look down and then look up and oh no it's changed or oh it's moved or whatever like whoa spooky like you can sense that unless it is like haunted and it's like jumping between different movements or whatever that's different but just from like a periphery, you can see like, oh, it's moving toward me. Let me look and stop it. And it reduces a lot of the scares or it, you know, you, you have, it feels like you have more control of that situation as opposed to what you're presented in a video game where it's like, I'm looking at this in frame. I'm completely immersed in this, which then allows this to change. Uh, so it's just like a subtle difference there that I think is interesting to call out and something that you don't really think about until you truly think about like, but what would the real situation look and feel like if I was sitting down there in a chair with animatronics coming at me? Um, interesting, if you haven't seen that Game Lab episode, it's, it's available on the channel. Um, one thing that did prove true though, was not wanting to leave the security of your space, right? In, in horror games and movies and whatever, you're like, oh no, I'm gonna hide in the corner and not leave. And you're like, no, get out of there, get out of there. But my response in that moment as animatronics were coming and attacking me, I'm like, I don't want to leave the place that I know because I don't know what's around the corner. I don't know what else could be hunting me, right? I know I'm surrounded by stuff. I don't know where they are. And so it's safer for me to hide in a location that I know as opposed to go out the, to the unknown, right? So that was, it ended up being, it was kind of a weird fit for Game Lab, but it ended up being a really interesting episode about like what we do when we're afraid and and what is scary 
you know, and what isn't. Like, I have control over this environment because of my peripheral vision, but I don't have control uh, of the outside world, so let me hide in the corner. It was interesting. Document went up about 90 degrees, so... Nice! Look at him! That is a yes. <laughs> no, there's, there, there's that floating VR hand. Audio prompt in three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> it's just a dial tone, a dial up for uh, internet. Oh, try. I, I don't think so. I think there's someone on the other side, like recording. Yeah, you think that they're like, okay, we're gonna insert a very specific audio prompt. I mean, yeah, of course. Clearly, that's a way to talk to the animatronics. Yeah. So, some theorist out there uh -huh. was like, you know what? I need to understand this. Wow, really? Yes. That's amazing. Like, <laughs> so they've created their own language to speak to the animatronics? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna say that. You know what? That actually reminds me. Sometimes I talk to Tom that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. We have our own secret. The the theorists have a secret code. Like, obviously now Style Theory is launched, so we can talk about it in public. Oh. And we're really happy, right? It's like, oh, thank goodness, thank finally. That we kept it a secret the whole time. Amazing. Everything worked as, as wonderfully as we wanted it to. It's great. Uh, could not be more proud of, of that channel and, and what's going on with it. Um, but, you know, you can't talk about it in public. And so, you know, we would go around and the secret name for Style Theory was... Bah, 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 bah. It's like, oh... Yeah, how are the videos going for blah, 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 blah. And Ash would respond with, <laughs> which means, oh, we're uh, working on two thumbnails right now. Yep. Yeah. And then I would be like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. and I'd be like, oh, but the logo looks great. Let's uh, let's keep pushing forward. <laughs> at which point Ash would respond with, <laughs> mm -hmm. that would be like, what? Push forward. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, yeah, fa, 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 ha. is, hey, now the latest uploads <laughs> are waiting for notes on Framio. <laughs> I just got done and did my notes, at which point Ash would be like, Yeah, I'll talk to Sedge, make sure that those get finalized, and we'll pass them all for Q QC with Amy. Uh, so that's, that was how it worked. Uh, that's, so you know what? Yeah, I, I think about this as a ridiculous situation where random sounds are getting projected at a weird chicken creature, but it's, it's true to life. Yeah. Honestly. And now we all know that the person recording these sounds... Mm -hmm. Was Tom. It was Tom the whole time. Tom, was... Ash, who knows? Yeah. A mix of everyone. Yep. Yep. It's, it's our secret code. <laughs> wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. That means please like and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> obviously. I'm just going to insert that <laughs> unprompted into a game theory at some point. Maybe the next FNAF time I'll be <laughs> wee -oo, wee -oo. Wee -oo. What is he doing? <laughs> Stop, Matt. No Matt context. Finally, Matt finally lost it. It's like, we'll know. We'll know. It'll be at the end. Maybe it'll be at the very, very end of one of them. Like, it's, it's like that Jimmy Neutron show and tell meme where it's like, Matt Pat finally lost it, where it's like, um, Shane, you've brought in Matt Pat finally lost it to the last 12 classes. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been losing it. I've been losing it for years, friendos. All right, here, let's let's react. Yeah. Woo woo! Okay. Everything <coughs> looks like a scarecrow now. See, this is legitimately creepy. All right, so same thing with the right arm. So that's another yes. Like, this is scary in a way that this mini game in FNAF 6 didn't really get to me. In three, two, one. <coughs> Easier than I thought. Ah, yes. The robots be burping. This is just whale noises. It's whale noises, or it could be Tommy doing. Oh, oh. oh no! I was, <laughs> I was gonna do like my like seal claps, and I'm just knocking everything. <laughs> they said absolutely not. No, no whale noises for you. So what were you gonna say, Ash? It's Tom. Is it Tom? Yeah, he was making whale noises, and then he slowed it down. <laughs> That seems appropriate. That seems like something Tom would do. Right? I can see Tom doing that. Like, just in his free time. In his free time. Yeah, that's totally an activity that Tom would do in his free time. <laughs> 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 Document <laughs> 
results. Okay. I didn't see any movement. Like nothing moved that time. Guess that's a no then. <laughs> Guess that's a no. All right. Begin audio. Ah, there it is. Oh. In three. The eyes moved. Um, Did you notice that? Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, yes. I, I guess well, that. I'm talking to you, no. but I'm also talking to the guy. Oh, yeah. oh look, he's okay. fixed. Look at look how diligent so. he is. Uh, It'll be a no. yes. Fuck it. All right. <laughs> yes. Sure, but no. All right, so the eyes move and then. Oh! Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was really good. Oh, that one got me. I didn't see that one coming. Uh, that was really funny. What the fuck? Yeah. Ooh, sensor. <sighs> okay. Mature stream, guys. Mature stream. Mature stream. All right, I, I guess the hips move too. <laughs> Hold up! <laughs> Hold up! <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! He's like, oh geez, the eyes just disappeared from the sockets in their head. Also, the hips moved. The hips don't lie. <laughs> I mean, obviously, Chica's hips don't lie. We've all seen Toy Chica's high school years, the anime from Ultimate Custom Night. So we know that she, Toy Chica's hips don't lie. But <laughs> just like, oh, he's like, no. oh, oh no! Oh, this thing's gonna kill me. Also, the hips oh. move, move slightly. Oh yeah, look, look I've, at that. I've done a little shimmy. Yeah, oh, shimmy. Let, let me let me let me drop that down real do, quick. Doing the toy chica shimmy. The toy chica shimmy. That's what it is. That's that's her new attack pattern in the in the upcoming ruin DLC. That's what's taking so long. The really fine tuning. Oh yeah. yeah. The really fine dialing in with the uh, the chica's attack animation. The chica shimmy. <laughs> Scott's like it's not good enough. <laughs> no, <laughs> shimmy harder. <laughs> Poor chica. Um, <laughs> Poor chica. I don't. Uh, Did the no. hips move though? Like really? I, I know we're all focused on like the spooky eyeballs. I mean, there might be movement what like the at fuck? the hips. <sighs> then that, right. Okay, there's the spooky eyes. Sure now. Okay, let's let's, let's right, pay attention the to the hips. Ignore the spooky eyes and focus on the hips, guys. Then... Okay, so spook ah. okay. Spo spooky ball. The fuck? <sighs> and then here we go. <sighs> okay. Oh yeah, the hips do seem more pronounced this time. <laughs> it's like they're doing the time. It's like Chica's doing the time warp. <laughs> they're pronounced capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the baby all right, I guess the hips move too. <laughs> all right, um, so hips I forward. I don't really know. I'll... Also, Whatever. you know, if you're concerned about this process what? at all, sir, hips move on that one. Grab a clipboard. And just hold it. Like really. All of the scares in this minigame can be completely thwarted. J just being like, uh, I'm watching on the side, let me just press it on my knee. You know, this is fine. Or like mark it on your hand and then transfer the answers to paper later. Okay, nothing, nothing. nothing He's like, no, just no. <laughs> lift the paper. Lift the one. paper. Lift the paper. But how are we going to get those spooky Begin scares? Audio prompt in three, I'm just two, trying to do my job, man. One. I'm just trying to be efficient at my job. Ah, the, uh, the bees have arrived. <laughs> the bees are here. The bees, not the bees! Not the bees! Not the bees! No, not the bees! Again. Another no. You can also back up Damn to I get a wider think. angle. Like, <laughs> Lean back a little bit. Yeah. Right, just do the lead. Begin audio prompt in three, two, one. He has like one. an extendo pen. Oh, this is my favorite jam. Tom's learning the flute. Do 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 do. This seems about Tom's level of musical Document expertise results. on the flute. Okay, another no. The oboe. Or is it the oboe? Oh, that was more of an oboe. It was, was it was deeper. I apologize to all the band kids out there. Yeah, that was. I was gonna say that wasn't a flute. That was that was okay, oboe or clarinet one. style. Man. I I, I sincerely apologize. Begin that was a double read. Three, Solid double read. Two, one. Oh, oh ooh. One second. <laughs> oh, that's great! Whoa! Oh! Whoa! Whoa! What? What the? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, my chair fell! <laughs> so bad, I can't breathe. Ooh! What the fuck is that? Oh, that's creepy. What the fuck? What the fuck was that? That's creepy. Oh, this is legitimately God. creepy. Fuck. See, now this is what this mini game should feel like. Like, this is actually the fear okay, that it should engender. This is great. <sighs> that slow lift. Mm. Oh. Ooh! <laughs> Something definitely moved that time. Oh, that's terrifying. No, 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 
No, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, where the fuck did it go? <laughs> what the fuck is this? So it is a ghost. It is ghostly. No. Okay. So that's no, different. No, no. Oh, no. Oh. oh, cool. That was effective. That was really good. That was really, really good. The eyes descending and the mouth. Like, I think with this one in particular, those moments of, like, slow... There she goes. Ah, I'm gonna get you. Ah, I'm gonna attack you. Um... Those moments of, like, slow dread that build are really effective. Because you're watching, like, the mouth slowly open, the eyes slowly lower. And, you're, it, and, and not only is that in and of itself unsettling and scary, but the resulting, like, creature, like, big holes in its eyes or, like, the overly wide mouth or whatever. Like, that's, that's really disturbing. That's, that was really good. This is really solid. I like these FNAF analog horror tapes. This is super cool. Yeah. All right, next up would be maintenance report. Yes, we are maintaining now. YouTube's incompetence strikes back. <laughs> Very exciting, obviously, but uh, maintenance report. Let's do this one. Wow, 1.1. 1. 1. These actually did. I didn't notice the view counts before. These actually did really well for Spectre. Yeah. Right? A police recovered tape of the manager's office at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Finally, it can be released to the public after 22 years. Write that down. 22 years. Ah! It's lore. 22 years. Oh, man. Let's see. <coughs> oh. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's like preview of coming attractions or for the watch time. Just the greeting. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Okay. All right. So I've managed to finally roll this thing in here. So I guess let's go ahead and get started. Now. Let's go ahead and get started. The boss wants me to run through like this. this guy. Already. This guy's got that positive can do attitude. Like, I got this, man. Got this animatronic wheeled in here, ready to go. Let's so, play some creepy sounds at it. Why this thing has been acting up lately. Uh, we're also opening a new location next year, so... New location! Oh my, it doesn't end. Oh, so much lore! So all the happen. lore, all the time. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to strip this thing apart so we can use it for spare parts for the newer animatronic models. So let's go ahead and see what I need to do first. Yep. Let's see here. Movement test. All right, then. We will need as many parts as we can salvage from our remaining animatronics. These may include servos, wires, circuit boards, or pieces from the endoskeleton. Huh. Insert the floppy disk titled Animatronic Movement Test Program into the computer to test each of the animatronics' joint movements. Okay. Sounds simple enough. All right, let's get the computer on. <laughs> oh, man, old school tech. Up, and let's see how this movement test goes. Let, let, let's see. Let's see how this movement let's test goes. See. Ah, here it is. Put <clears throat> mm. that puppy in there. <laughs> Did he do that in backwards? <laughs> I feel like that was. I feel like that was backwards. Usually oh the my gosh. the what? No, just that's that's funny. What that he did like? Because usually the label was toward you, and you would and so. Oh, that, my friends, all, all you youngsters in the audience, that's a floppy disk, um, which is ironic because it's not floppy. The it's it's pretty firm. Yeah, it's a firm disk. The reason it's, I believe, the reason it's called floppy is because the inside magnetic like tape wheel inside that's floppy. I'm guessing. I don't know. That's I've never actually stopped to question why they're called floppy disks. Anyway, the way that they would work is they were a hard like plastic shell, and then there was a little thing that you could slide or that the computer slides to read the magnetic track inside. Um, and so you always wanted the, the thing that slid, the little, like, protective cover first thing. Uh, speaking of, Ash, are you old enough to remember floppy disks or no? Was that, like, after your time? Um, I do remember them. Yeah. Not very well, but I do. Floppy disk noises? Bangers. They were yeah. awesome. Yes. Agree. Oh, okay. For those of you who don't know. So here we go. Here we go. This is an educational channel after all. Here we go. Sounds of the floppy disk. Oh man, they're giving you a variety too. This is a variety pack floppy disk. Three and a half versus five and a, five and a quarter. So you got the big boy. Hefty boys. See, and the label goes in last. I'm just saying. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that chonky sound as it's reading it. It's a little bit like... A little bit like printer, printer style. Like, 
I remember this as, as a kid, like this chunky. When, when I was growing up, you know, even floppy disks were a little bit late for me. Um, but we did have Microsoft Word on our computer, but in order to install it, anytime you installed it, it was literally like 32 disks worth of Microsoft Word. That just, insert disk 24! 25 just bit by bit you slowly installed the program. It was, I mean, that's how little info was on these things. It was crazy. Bit by bit. Ooh, hey, there's some there's some highlights apparently. Most replayed. Right? The most fun. <laughs> okay, track to track seek. It is funny how like a random collection of sounds can sometimes like generate unintentional music. This one must be another one. Woo! Oh, that's awesome! No way! Oh, that. See, who needs AI generated artwork when you have floppy disk generated music? We we were in we were. Uh, at risk the entire time and didn't even realize it. We have strayed so far from the light. We <laughs> they were coming for our jobs with the floppy disks. <laughs> They're like, stand aside, Taylor Swift. We got this. <laughs> Five and a quarter random seat. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to play while well, let's do it again. It was awesome. <laughs> Wait for the beats drop. <laughs> I mean, this is doing just as much work as like a celebrity DJ. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let me press some buttons and then randomly something will work together. Oh, that was awesome. That was so cool. Anyway, uh, what a what a great trip down memory lane. That chonky sound was really satisfying. It apparently, it makes unintentional music, which is nuts. All right, let's do this. Woo! Burnt. I'm gonna be. It's like an earworm. It's gonna be stuck in my head the entire time. Booting up. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Okay. This is gonna be like, where are we going with this? Let go! Yes. Yes! Alright, let's see here. Cool. Let's go ahead and start with the head movements first. A, G, A, D. And then we'll just go down the rest of the body. Nice. It is interesting to think about where, and again, I mentioned this before about how. Okay, well then, looks like the neck and jaw joints are functioning normally. So I'm gonna put this camera down. Real quick so I how can. watching these sorts of things makes me think. Huh. Oh, he's there. Strange. <laughs> I guess there's some kind of circuit malfunction. I'm not sure why it's. <laughs> oh, okay. the, the killer head tilt. <laughs> the evil head tilt. That's awesome. Okay, so let me just go ahead and make sure everything is connected right, get it all rebooted, and Don't then we'll pick up where we left off. Okay. Yeah, the idea of having okay. to salvage so parts is interesting the to me. Now on the back of the head here. I, I never really thought about that, but again, like, looking at how some of these FNAF fan creations looks at the world gives you a different perspective, right? I never thought about, like, oh, it's a cost-saving measure. They might be shorted. These control the neck and jaw servos, and yeah, they seem to have been shorted. So that means the head won't move unless all of the electronics are completely gutted and replaced. Gutted. Thankfully, I'm not repairing this piece of junk, so I guess I'll just leave everything out. Body is offended you said that. <laughs> this piece of junk. <clears throat> hey. All right, so let's. How dare you? Ears. E A R. It's true that he types. Huh. Says it as he types. Why aren't they moving? Connected to the servos, that's why the circuit board. <sighs> Nothing. Alright, so if the ears aren't moving, that means the shortage affected just about everything, everything connected head up. to the head. Yeah, that so makes sense. The ears don't work either. Alright, let's try the arms instead, I guess. Nice. 
Oh, cool. It's, it's, it's really effective. Again, like, the animation is really effective. Great. At least we can salvage something from the endoskeleton. So let's try the other one now. Please, please windmill. <laughs> Bonnie is able to windmill on the electric guitar. Oh! Jesus Christ. Dude, I was close. <laughs> that would be amazing. Bonnie is able to smash guitar. T test Damn. out all the possible okay. movements. So the entire smash guitar into ground. Snapped. All of these parts are so grimy and full of rust that these constant failures don't exactly surprise me. <laughs> So, I mean, I might be able to sound... These constant before. failures don't exactly surprise me, a man of uh, robotic sophistication and taste. I'm in hand, but I don't know how. Looks like I'll only be able to entirely salvage the left arm, though. Which, I guess, is better than nothing. Hmm. Damn, this thing stinks. Damn! <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and take off this left arm now before something kills it. Damn, Probably this thing stinks. Yeah, it's the, the dead kid side. Just spoiler, spoiler warning for you, bud. A child. <laughs> a child, a dead, right. dead kid. So as you can see here, I managed to get the left arm taken off. Took a bit of force and of course some know-how, but, you know, but here it is. Pretty strong. As you can see, the wires are cut, pretty but buff. still intact enough to be rewired to anything else. So hopefully I'll be able to salvage everything that I haven't tested already. But, seeing how easily that right shoulder joint just snapped, I highly doubt it'll be that easy. It just snapped. Alright, let's move on to the hips now. Bonnie's hips don't lie either. But we're about I, to find out. I have never thought so much about animatronic hips than I have in the last half hour, Ash. There is so much... <laughs> look at that! Look, <laughs> look at that! Everyone's got their dance moves today! It, it really makes you think about it. It makes you think. <laughs> it really makes you think it, about a it lot. It shifts your perspective. About a lot of things it makes you think. <laughs> about about my life decisions talking about the hips of an animatronic. <laughs> makes you think. Chica's hips doing the pelvic thing. Bonnie's got the slow roll doing the butt. It's the Bonnie strut. Oh gosh. What? The Bonnie strut. Bonnie strut. You got you got the Chica shimmy. Yep. You got the Chica shimmy and you got the Bonnie strut. <laughs> Next time you're at the school dance, ladies and gentlemen, bust those those moves out. I mean, this thing might as well just come A lot of animatronic right hips in this one. I'm going to want me to salvage any rewriting all, all the lore right now. All right. Let's move on to the legs. Let's move on to the legs. <laughs> Works. Put your left leg in, you put your left leg out. Okay, those seem to be working fine. That was pretty good. Salvage that puppy. Each time he turns, I, I expect him to get closer, but I guess not. Pretty good! Both legs seem to be working fine. Oh, I like how enthusiastic he is. He's like, oh, I'm so excited time, about these legs. When I get finished with everything else, because I'll still need this thing standing. Okay, fabric exterior salvage. The new animatronic models will be made from a plastic mold. Plastic mold, write it down. It's fun time animatronic, probably. Or, no, it would be a toy. The most important of which are the hard-to-replicate features such as the head, there it is. face, hands. Dude. Oh, <laughs> it's closer than I expected. <laughs> Why? Why is? Oh, <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Okay. Forgot yeah. Right. Turn the computer off. Woo. Okay. So, uh, anyways, it sounds like I'm. If they, can you? <laughs> That's funny. Salvaging the can you imagine if they actually sounded that way when they moved? It would make the game so much easier. You just the hear them slowly. <laughs> like, Popping the eyes. I just, I just expect the eye to like look at him all of a sudden. All right. With that, that should be everything. Oh. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and taken the it. eyes out since they seem to be working just This is fine. cool. This is cool. In addition to that, I also went ahead and took off a foot and the right hand since they were pretty much the only remaining. It's it's pieces. it's withered Bonnie. I I get it now. Like. He's coming up with an ex Spectre, the, the creator, is coming up with an explanation for why Withered Bonnie looks the way that Withered Bonnie looks. Which again, I, you know, I hadn't really thought about. You know, I said, oh, it's just the Withered animatronics, and so these are the designs of the Withered animatronics. Like, 
I never thought to question that, which is silly because I question other parts of their design, right? Like toes and buttons and bow ties and oh and all the, what? Toes and buttons and, and, and bow ties. ties. Oh, oh my. my. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Dorothy. Um, but yeah, no, like, and it's, it, yeah, I, I, it's, it's funny because you, you don't ask the questions you don't realize to, to ask. And so here, for whatever, that's so interesting. I wonder why I never thought that. I've never thought to question like, oh yeah, why does Bonnie, withered Bonnie, is missing an arm and a foot and the face, like why is the faceplate removed? And it's, again, it's cool that Spectre has thought about that and is like, here, here is a rational explanation for why. This is the, my reasoning for why no this doesn't exist. So, That's cool. Part, along with their exterior pieces, I, I'm, not, I'm not 100% sure thought. if it helps you solve the lore right, or figure it out, but in this, in this case, because so it was so early in the franchise that I don't know if Scott truly had like a like an idea in mind of like, oh, this is why certain parts are missing, but it's really well, interesting. The only thing that could also go, but it's is the face? Time right now is the head plate here. There it is. For some reason, it won't That's cool. And That's cool. I like that. Lost. I've checked for anything that could still be holding it in place, and so far I've found nothing. However, Except for I the do remember the spirits of dead children. Specifically, so that. that means it's one of the main pieces they want. So I don't know. I guess let me keep cracking at it until something gives. Then I'll restart the recording and let you know what I find out. Yeah. All right. After a bit of there it is. Of yep, that makes sense. Finish, cool. That's smart. There. I love this. So I figured out that the headpiece still wouldn't budge because it's completely glued to the back of the head, which is very unusual. Very. So I, to I, as an I animatronic expert like and not a part-time worker, kid doing this nights and weekends to pay my way through college, like very unusual. Face of the animatronic. So that's down there along with everything I managed to physically scrap from this thing. So we are done with that then. Good for you, man. Okay. Let's see. Odor report. <laughs> Stinks. Okay. Okay, Stanks. We've recently been receiving complaints about smells and unpleasant odors emitting from the animatronic. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh, These yeah. Have been described as rotten. Yep. Decomposed like something died inside. <laughs> like that's very the explicit. Or animal had accidentally found its way into the animatronic and became trapped within its chest. Press down both of the shoulders to remove the torso. G give the shoulders a nice <laughs> massage. Not again. Press down both shoulders. Huh. I guess the power went out. Yeah, I might have tripped a breaker or something with all that computer. Ah, 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 whatever. <sighs> all right. Oh, jeez. Power back on and hopefully finish up. Still got such a positive attitude towards everything. Oh, gee, Willikers. Guess I guess I just tripped a breaker. Hey, let me out, guys. This isn't funny. Uh, oh, all oh, those guys. Where'd it, where'd it go? Oh, really? Right now? Come on, come on! Huh. <gasps> Here he goes. What the fuck? Oh, Why? man. Oh, God. Ooh. Ooh. What the fuck? Those what sounds. Fuck? Jesus Christ, what was that? It's the animatronic. <laughs> Nice. That that sound. The sound. Why is it? That sound is rough. That's 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 really effective. Again, like the sound design. Ooh, ooh. I I do miss that. Um, you know, everyone always talks about like what's the best FNAF the FNAF game? What's the best installment of the series? This and that. To me, the first game had such incredibly haunting and scary sound design that no other game has ever replicated that. Like the the sounds of like moaning and like the the Chica's like heavy breathing and stuff like, you know, it's like the, uh, uh, or whatever, I forget, I can't do it right now, but like the, uh, it's these high pitched like breathy like rasps and stuff. They're so scary. And each game has kind of like progressively gotten away from a lot of the like sound design that felt so oppressive in that first game and was so unsettling in that first game. Um, where you could tell that there was like something still living and breathing in these in these robots. It was crazy. Um, so that right there, like the cries of children, woo, gets me all gets me all shivery. Woo. Um, all right. So that's the first two. 
Uh, number ooh, number three is so the most recent one is twenty minutes. I think we save that one for another day. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I feel good about this. This is cool, I, and I want to continue with this. This is awesome. I love these. Um, so this is really fun. Spectre, really well done. Clap and half to you uh, for putting this together, and and also getting me to <coughs> rethink parts of again, like parts of the lore that I hadn't really considered. Right, like the idea of the salvage. And reusing parts and stuff was, wasn't really, again, like, wasn't really things that I had considered it as part of the narrative, as part of the story, right? Like, why would the face be missing? Why would that? And so it's cool to get to see that all in action. Um, and to think like, hey, maybe I do need to look at that and figure out why certain parts went missing and other ones were, were preserved. Um, maybe there is some lore clue there somewhere. So really cool, really good work. And also just, you know, these are long videos that, you know, fully animated and told in VR. It's just really incredible. I don't know exactly know how people do it in VR. Like, if they're modeling them and inserting the models and then just filming the, the, the player or whatever. But, like, it's it's awesome. So, really, really cool. Great work. Uh, clearly, it's it's work for you, too. I'm glad that these have over a million views. Congratulations there. I'm excited for the last one. So, uh, we'll have to hop into that on another day. But uh, in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya! Bye.